In this video, we're going to describe assignments, shallow, and deep copies in Python. Now, we've already seen basic assignment operations in previous notebooks, but now we're going to take a closer look at what happens when we actually make an assignment. So let's start with a list A, and like in the image here, we're going to give it the values 1 through 7. Now we know that the right-hand side is going to create a list object containing these seven elements. And the assignment operator is going to bind the name on the left to the object created on the right. So what happens when I say B equals A? Well, in this case, B is not receiving a copy of A. That is, we're not creating a new list on the right-hand side and then binding it to the name B. Instead, we're binding the name B to the same list as A, as depicted in the image below. Both A and B here point to the same list. And if we output B here, we see that this appears to be true. But how do we know this is the same list object and not a new list object? Well, one way to check this is that we can make a modification to B and then see if A has also been modified. So to do that, we simply replace one of the elements in B, say the first element, and then we output A and see if A now has the value 42 as its first element. And in the output here, we see that that is indeed true. A has been modified, even though we explicitly modified B, not A. So we can conclude from this that both A and B point to the same list object. Now, if you went through the previous notebook on objects, you know that we can also verify this directly by using the ID function, which returns the identity of an object. So here I'll print out the ID of both A and B, and then we can compare the output. And we see that the ID is in fact the same. So we know that both A and B point to the same object. Now, what if I didn't want A and B to point to the same list object? That is, what if I wanted an actual copy of the list to be bound to the name B? Well, there are two types of copies that we can do in Python, shallow and deep. A shallow copy creates a new object, but it doesn't do this recursively. Instead, any subcomponents of that object are really references back to the original object, meaning that if the object being shallow copied stores or contains the identities of other objects, then the identities themselves will be copied and not the objects that they represent. And this can actually get us into trouble if we're not paying attention. So what does this all mean? Let's create a new list that contains both a list and a string. And now let's actually perform a shallow copy. So we already know if we wrote B equals A that this isn't going to produce a copy. But in the notebook on lists, if you recall, we saw that slicing operations create new list objects containing specified range of values from the original. So let's start with that. In this slice, we're going to omit both the start and stop indices, meaning that we want all elements from A. And now to verify that the slice did in fact create a copy, we're going to use the ID function, just as we did before, to print out the IDs of both A and B. And here in the output, we see that those IDs in fact differ, meaning that the slice did create a new list object for us. And of course, if we were to rerun this and print B, we see that while it is a different object, it does still contain the same elements as A. So my claim was that if this is truly a shallow copy, that the elements would actually be references back to the originals as depicted in the picture below. So we can check this again by using the ID function or by simply modifying one of the elements in the list and see if that change is reflected in the other object. So let's actually try modifying the list by appending a new element. Now, again, if this is a reference, then both A and B should show the newly appended value. So if I write B0, I'll use the in place append operator plus equals. We'll try to append the list containing 42. And then we're just going to print out both A and B. So when we print these lists, we see that both A and B show the new value 42 appended to the sublist. And that's even though A and B point to different objects. So this tells us that the slice operation did perform a shallow copy. Now, we know that lists are mutable, and so we are able to append 42 in place using the plus equals operator. Strings, on the other hand, are immutable, and that any change we wish to make results in a new string. So what happens if we attempt to append characters to our string 456? So I'm going to write b1, and we're going to use plus equals again, but this time we're going to append a string, and I'm going to print out a and b again. And in this case, we see that A does not show the updated string. So why is that? Because strings are immutable, the plus equals operator cannot modify the string in place. Instead, a new string is created that contains all the elements, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8. And then that new string is bound to B1, 
thus replacing the previous reference in the string. And so A and B no longer point to the same string object in the second position. Similarly, if we were to bind B0 to a new value like 42, and then print out the list again, you'll see, of course, that A would not be affected here. And while this may seem obvious in this case, since we rebound the element, it's actually the same thing that is occurring with the string in the previous example. So shallow copies can be very nice if you have objects that need to share their internal components. Or let's say you have a very large data structure, maybe a, a very long list, and you need the original ordering for some operations, but a sorted ordering for other operations. So you could use a shallow copy to make separate lists to be sorted without keeping two complete copies of all of the elements. And this has the benefit of saving memory in the event that the elements themselves are somewhat more complicated than object IDs. So there's actually a generic interface for making copies that you can also use. And this provides a more explicit way of specifying the type of copy that you're making. However, to use this interface, we have to import the copy module, which can be imported similarly to the math module that we saw in the calculator notebook. So to see how this works, I'm gonna paste here the same example we had above, where we use a slice operation to make a shallow copy of A. And now I'm gonna remove the slice operation, and we're gonna use the copy function from the copy module. So I write copy, which is the name of the module, dot copy, which is the name of the function, and then I'm gonna pass A as the argument to this function. And we run the block, we see here that the ID of A and B are different, and B does contain the same contents as A. So the call to copy.copy .copy is gonna perform a shallow copy, and you can actually use this function for any object, and if your intent is to create a shallow copy, then it's certainly better to use this function rather than a slice, since it more clearly expresses the intent and makes it harder to overlook the fact that these data structures are using references to the same set of objects. Now the copy module also gives a function performing deep copies. Now a deep copy recursively copies the objects and their subcomponents to avoid any references back to the originals. So you can think of this as a true and complete copy. Now to show you how this works, I'm gonna repeat the previous example. I'm just gonna paste it here. Now I will point out that it's not necessary to import the copy module for every block. You can really do this at the beginning of the notebook one time and just use it throughout. I'm including it here just for completeness so that you know that it's required for this particular operation. As it stands, the code that I've just pasted in here performs a shallow copy. In order to make a deep copy, there's only one change we have to make, and that's the call the deep copy function. And that's it. I'll run this block, and we see that the IDs of A and B are different. The contents of B match the contents of A. But just to quickly verify that this is indeed a true copy and not a shallow copy, we're just going to append a value to the first list again in B and see if A reflects that change. And when we run this block, we see that in the output, only B has been affected by this append, meaning that a deep copy was performed and not a shallow copy. 